All right, guys, happy Monday. Welcome in. It is another edition of the Happy Hour Tip-Off Show brought to you by wagertalk.com. I'm Joe Ranieri. He is Ralph Michaels at Cal Sports LV and, of course, at Joe Ranieri and, of course, at Wager Talk. Guys, all places that you should definitely uh, be tailing here, certainly on social media, on Twitter, on YouTube. Make sure that you guys check it out. Plenty of great information for you to make it a profitable week if it wasn't, in fact, already a profitable weekend. And Ralph, college hoops this past weekend, couple of a uh, couple of upsets, couple of a uh, couple of head scratching games there, but all in all, it was uh, it was a fun weekend at college hoops. Yeah, I mean there were no crazy upsets. Fifteen point upset was the biggest, but you know, uh, you know, let's start off the show by reminding everyone. I mean, there's no better day to go to wager talk or sports memo than on Mondays. Every play, every package, nine dollars. Uh, and I have a 5% college football play, 5-2 and two this past weekend in college football. I love November football. I've got a $5 college football play for $9. I also have a Monday night total up there for $9, so a great week to perhaps to try an all-access package as well. There you go. Pretty simple, too, guys. If you get over there, it's wagertalk.com right there. You'll check out the uh, the Cal Sports page. All his packages, all plays are available. And make sure you're checking back daily as well as following him on Twitter at CalSportsLV because all sorts of great information always coming your way. And all right, Ralph, as we take a look here at some of the things and some of the games that happened over the weekend, you know, we always like to start with maybe some of the standout performances because these are, this is the next wave, right, Ralph? I mean, these are some of these uh, kids' names here are what you're going to be hearing over the next four or five months. Hell, even till baseball season starts, Ralph, we're going to be playing college hoops. So it's always good to get a good idea on who's making waves, who's making shots, who's making a name for themselves. It is. And, you know, the most important guys aren't always the NBA guys. You know, the most important guys is a guy that is dominant for his team. If you've got a guy that's a double-double guy, you know, and you're playing in a lesser conference, well, some can say he's more important to his team than an NBA guy is to his. So, you know, I'll run down the Sunday guys that you need to keep. So you know who the stars are, you know who's performing well, and then if injuries occur to these guys, you know how important they are. Marion Jackson from Toledo, 27 points, 10 assists. Andrew uh, Costeca from Loyola, Maryland against Fairfield, 31 points, five rebounds, six assists, four steals. Robert Woodard from Mississippi State, 21 points, 16 rebounds, four assists, three steals. And C.J. Ellerby from Washington State, big win against Idaho State, 23 points, eight rebounds, and seven steals. Seven steals in a college basketball game. Yeah, uh, yeah you're still playing a Division One opponent in Idaho State. It's not like you're playing in an AI game. Joe, take <laughs> us through those Saturday leaders. You got Brandon uh, Rockall there of Tulsa. Uh, he was taking on Austin P. Ha- has dropping 30, uh, 32 and five there. Assists, of course, and steals. You had Isaiah Mike SMU Jackson State SMU. Interesting on Saturday. We'll see and talk about them again a little bit later as they've got an upcoming game 24 7 and 1 uh oh yeah Shamarcus Kennedy huh McNeese State taking on New Mexico New Mexico all banged up 26 points uh three assists two steals Adam Kunkel from Belmont I I'm still if I'm not mis- I'm I think they're still scoring points against Boston College here 35 points two assists two steals in that game Corey Magnall from uh again New Mexico a little banged up unfortunately 24 points Two assists, three steals, and finally Malik Johnson. How about Canisius taking on Bucknell? 27 points, six assists, four steals in that game. Big game all the way around, but definitely some injuries and some uh, some shooting woes for some of these other teams as well. Yeah, you know, Shamarcus Kennedy from McNeese State, you talked about those 26.9 rebounds, adding six blocks to his line, and uh you know, uh, it's big to know those rim protectors. That's a name you're going to want to know because if there's ever an injury with him, it changes the way they can play defense. You know, just think Taco Fall and UCF from last year. Yep, yeah. And, of course, not only, Ralph, was there uh, were there some great 
obviously individual performances, but some great team performances too, as we definitely had our share of upsets happening this weekend as well. And uh, I guess you you start yesterday too. It, it wasn't a big slate of games, but it certainly came with its uh, with its fair share of upsets. Well, when we get to a Saturday, obviously, it's just going to be the, the prime upsets. And there was only two upsets yesterday from teams that were a dog of three or more. Montana State against Tennessee Tech and, boy, Florida. I mean, they looked horrible against Florida State. Now they go down against UConn, uh, 62-59. Florida was a four-point favorite in that game. So, you know, uh, Charlotte, uh, we, we you know, we saw Texas uh, – Corpus Christi knockoff UTRGV. So, but again, upsets, only two upsets on Saturday for teams that were a dog of three or more. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you had your share on Saturday, of course, and you start looking at some of these lines and some of these finals. Uh, you had Montana State uh, walking away with a game there. The line was 15, but hey, 67, uh, 67, 66 there, Ralph. Certainly was a little bit closer than they anticipated. How about Rice uh, also, 82, 81, nine and what a, a half weekend. point line. Right? What a weekend point. for the Rice Owls. I was, football, <laughs> football and basketball. You, Holy stopped, you did not have the Rice out. Nobody had the East Middle Tennessee State is on fire right now trying to figure out how they lost to the Rice Owls in football. But you I, had, <laughs> I, had the, I had the under, Joe. So did Rice, you really? Yeah, Rice scores a total of, what, eight points the previous eight games and all of a sudden pulls I one out of their ass. And can't. so, hey. Big weekend for the Rice Owls, pulling upsets in football and basketball. Yes, absolutely. And you could see, I mean, some of these bigger lines, but a lot of very close games, while others, you know, Jackson State and Dartmouth, you had a seven, uh, a seven-point win there. K-State, well, K-State, boy, I, it's a good thing uh, K-State uh, won a game in basketball because they could not win on the football field either this weekend, Ralph, upset well, there in West Virginia. That that K State we're talking about is Kent State against Wright oh, State. Oh, it's Kent so, State. Oh, okay, yeah, good. Yeah. All right, thank so you. Well, my, my bad with with the uh, you, you know you have to learn the little lingo there for some of the abbreviations. So, uh, but yeah, you know, Canisius with a set with an upset as a seven point dog. You know, they were home. So yeah, you, you got to remember these home teams here. Mm. Sometimes they have a stronger home court. You know, we saw Canisius pull the upset at home. We saw Binghamton pull the upset at home. Uh, New Orleans and Manhattan, a small upset against Albany on their home court. I know. Is it uh, Tennessee Tech there in App State? It's interesting. It was a neutral, a couple of neutral site games here, Bonaventure and Rutgers. And, you know, Rutgers football is my hero for covering this weekend here. But a lot of these neutral site games, we always uh, we were always thought to be, hey, under is a pretty profitable situation in these neutral side games. But some of these teams, it doesn't make a difference where they're going. They're shooting lights out, uh, Ralph. They're scoring buckets left and right here. And, and you have to remember, some of these neutral games – are very small venues. It's not, you know, oftentimes we talk about sight lines and big venues and, and things where it changes so much. There's sometimes these guys are going down in size playing in high school gyms when you get to the Hawaii and the, and the Alaska tournaments and even the Bahama tournaments coming up. Mm -hmm. And then you're playing back-to-back -back games. So if your offense was slow to get started the season, all of a sudden, boom, you're playing multiple games and you can get that offense in flow. What did you have as far as totals here, Ralph? This weekend. Speaking of which, over there, what were some of the uh, what were some of the games that we uh, we had on the card there that were impressed? Well, the the biggest covers or or the failed the covers. If you look at Saturday, uh, you know I, I'm mentioning the top five games. App State was the biggest cover on the board Saturday. They covered by 27 points. They were laying five, one by 22. Damn. Montana State covered by 16 points. They were that 15-point dog that won the game outright. A couple of the Saturday totals. Uh, you saw SIU, SUI Edwardsville and the Carnet Word go under by 31 and a half points. Mm. 143 and a half total. You don't think you're going to get under by 30 points. That's what happens when there's a 57 55 <laughs> score. And even worse, 131 total, and you go under by 29 and a half points. North Dakota State and AM Corpus Christi. Final score is 57 45. And you mentioned the scoring in St. Bonneville's and Rutgers, mm -hmm. a total of 126. Wow. You're expecting a game in the 60s. Not so much. Yeah. It went over by 28 points. 
a final of 80 to 74. Crazy stuff there. And of course, guys, it's always important to be able to have an understanding of, you know, the numbers and, and the trends. And of course, nobody does that better than Ralph when it comes to uh, trends and angles. They're not the end all be all, but you will definitely start to see some things take shape here as the season progresses. And as we head into this week, Ralph, it feels like, uh, wow, what is it, week three already? Uh, somewhere around those, uh, somewhere around that here for college hoops. Uh, what are some of the trends and angles you've come up with here today on a, it's an abbreviated card again today, but nonetheless, some interesting action on the board. You know, one system that we talked about last week, which actually lost. And, you know, when you have a system that has enough of a presence and it has been a system long enough, you know, you don't want to fade it after one loss. You may have had an L if you played it, but uh, in November, playing off a team that lost as a favorite against an opponent that won as a dog, it actually says to fade Kentucky off their embarrassing loss. That system is 9-26, and 25.7%. And again, that is with a loss. It was 8-26 and 26 going into this past weekend. Mm. Other things to look at, Colorado, 9-1-1, one one, ATS, their last 11 at home. Middle Tennessee State, only 1-10 against the spread in non-conference games the last two years. Remember, Middle Tennessee State's focus is to win their conference. There's a lot of coaches that don't put as much effort into the non-conference because the number of wins don't matter. Their only way they're making the big dance is if they win their conference. So they work on things now, and then when they get in the conference play, they put in the emphasis. On the flip side, Oklahoma 15-2 and two against the spread against non-conference foes the last couple of years. You know, Joe, I know one of our most popular segments, you know, TNA gets a lot of love, but people like to know where the numbers are. And we break down three things specifically, and I'll ask you those in order. First, the biggest movers from when the overnight lines were posted, either sides or totals, what games, now often we know this, if it's a biggest mover, we're also going to talk about it in our next segment, which is the biggest percent right. of money's bet. Right. But give us those biggest line moves from the openers yesterday. I'll start in the West Coast, Ralph. So it's interesting. You had uh, Prairie View in California, uh, which is the one of the late games on the board here tonight, opened up as a 12-and-a-half uh, point uh, California um, – well, let's say a little chalky there at 12 and a half, but it's already moved. It's moved up to uh, almost a full two points here to 14 and a half. Uh, Cal, I know, has got uh, has got a new coach, a uh, new system in there. They got some players. They ran over Cal Baptist over the weekend. Amazingly enough, Ralph, they were only on Friday, I believe, a five-point, four-and-a-half, five-point favorite over Cal Baptist. Um, and they uh, they took it to him in the second half. But that's a pretty big – that's a two-point swing here uh, in just a couple of hours so far. You're also starting to see uh, one that's a little bit closer to the East Coast. How about Monmouth-Pittsburgh? Another one opened up as Pittsburgh as a big favorite, 14 and a half. That's already up to 16 and a half and 17 in a lot of books. And I'll give you one middle of the road. How about Middle Tennessee? How's that for middle of the road? Uh, they opened up as a two-point uh, dog against Coastal Carolina. That's already been pushed up to four in a lot of places there, Ralph. So we're starting to see some of these. Uh, it's early yet, obviously, as of, as of taping here. But we are starting to see more than uh, a point, point and a half swings in some of these lines. Well, Joe, are the same games that are getting the biggest percentage of bets. And we know there's a big difference. Mm. Percentage of bets could be guys putting on a lot of small bets. Percentage of money bets is a different scenario. Yes. So tell us the biggest percentages on sides and totals and whether they're number of tickets or number of dollars. Well, speaking of uh, a couple of games there, you uh, it's interesting. The Pittsburgh uh, the Pittsburgh game there that we mentioned, well, the reason for their move probably has to do with 82% of the tickets being written towards Pittsburgh. 59% uh, of the money is going to Pittsburgh. Now, it's interesting because Monmouth's only getting – 18% of the bets, Ralph, but they're getting 41% of the money, which sometimes we look at uh, a little sideways going, really? That's uh, interesting. Also, it's it's one of these games that I'm shocked it's getting as many tickets written for it as it is early on. And as far as that California game there that we mentioned there to start with, uh, Cal is one of these uh, situations where they're getting an awful lot of tickets. Actually, Ralph, uh, it looks about 85% of the money right now coming in on Cal, which might help explain that uh, that two-point swing from 12 and a half 
uh, to five. But as far as the sheer volume of bets and the games that are receiving the most, how about UTSA, Utah State, Ralph? Uh, Believe it or not, this is a top three handle right now on the card here today so far early on i don't know if they're getting up early out there or what's going on also charleston southern uh taking on michigan state that game getting a boatload of tickets written as is fairly dickinson taking on army ralph i don't know if that surprises you or not but not a lot of line movement but an awful lot of tickets being written on fairly dickinson in this one there is. That's certainly a neat, unique situation. And, you know, UTSA, uh, you talk about the Roadrunners. They were a team I was very high on. I mean, they probably – they returned the highest scoring backcourt in the country this year with uh, Javon Jackson and, and Wallace. And they have just been – they're 0-4. They've lost a couple games as a favorite. They have not played well. So uh, they're a team I, I lost on opening night against Oklahoma. I thought they would keep it close. And uh, – Boy, 8-point, 7-point, and 12-point losses to teams they easily could have won. I mean, they were favored, Southern Illinois, Oakland, Delaware. So uh, a head-scratcher for me. That's one of those kind of teams where uh, fool me once early. I'm going to wait to make sure you start playing better before I ever can jump on you again. There's an interesting one, too, guys. We all remember Wofford last year in the tournament, and boy, oh boy, can they shoot three-pointers, Ralph, right? It's what we've become to love about Wofford. They're a three-point shooting team. They're a three-point shooting team. Well, they're taking on Missouri, and this is another game that is slowly but surely starting to see the ticket count go up. But 33% of the bets are on Wofford, but that's almost 80% of the money, Ralph, while Missouri is getting all the tickets but obviously getting a little bit more of the public money there. And it's a 12 and a half Missouri favorite here against Wofford. I guess the bottom line is don't be mistaken. Wofford's not the same team that we've come to know from years past, or are they? Well, you know, we're going to skip ahead, Joe, Mm -hmm. before we get to our money line dogs, let's go ahead and, and talk about a situational spot because Wofford was my situational play. Perfect. Um, I was on Butler Saturday against mm-hmm. Wofford, and you are right. This still this team still wants to shoot the threes, but they lost several people that were the important cogs in that piece. So, you know what happened? Well, they struggled at home against William Mary. They started off with two a, a lower division win, and then they beat High Point, mm-hmm. one of the worst teams in football. No big deal. So then they lose at home to William Mary, a a team that they should have beaten. They were a favorite. What happens? They struggle in three-point land. So your first three games are at home. You're still not in sync. You still haven't found that go-to shooter. And what do you do? You go on the road and you play Butler on Saturday. Butler, complete size edge. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a mismatch inside. Butler pounded the ball inside. Uh, You know, it was was a 12 or 15-point lead at halftime. Butler controlled the game. I mean, I normally can't watch a game where I give out because every time the opposition scores a basket, I'm like, crap, here we go. So, (laughs) but I was able to watch most of the second half of the Butler-Wofford game because, you know, Butler, Wofford may make make some threes and get back in the game, but Mm -hmm. then Butler would pound it down low and get fouled as well and get people in foul trouble. I don't like Wofford in this spot again because now – you played Saturday at Butler. Mm-hmm. You're playing 48 hours later. You're having to travel to Missouri. Missouri's off that loss on the road to Xavier. Now they're back at home where they look good in their first two games. Mm-hmm. So I think Watford's just in another bad spot again. You know, and and you have a team even taller than Butler. Missouri has size. I think Missouri can go ahead and pound it in again. I think Missouri right now. We're only three games in. Mm-hmm. Missouri is number nine in the country in defensive three-point percentage. That's the exact kind of stitch you don't want with Wofford. So my situational spot for this game was to fade Wofford and take Missouri. Wow, look at that. All right, so we got, to, of course, some of the things that we do there. Uh, each and every show, guys, as we try to point you to maybe some underdogs that uh, might have a leg up here, at the very least cover, if not 
absolutely outright win there. And um, 17, it looks like, in that Missouri game over there. And uh, Wofford definitely not uh, going to be one of those money line dogs, I think, there, uh, Ralph. But is there a, is there a dog here today that maybe has uh, got your eyebrow raised a little bit? Well, when we when we go to this segment, I like using the main rotation games. So we're not looking at the added or extra games. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the games, I think there's, what, 14 games tonight or 12 games? Mm -hmm. All but two are double-digit favorites. So I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface this by saying this isn't – Really, one game that I would be betting on the money line like I normally do. Because when I have single-digit dogs, I split my bet with the side and the money line. Right. Uh, but, you know, Air Force is a team that returns all five starters. They run a, a, a just very slow passing offense. It, it's tough to just stay focused for that long with them. And it was close to making my card as a play. I didn't use them in that role, but... I do like Air Force to uh, to cover the spread. Hey, if they happen to pull off a big win as a 16 and a half point favorite, God bless them. But uh, they were a, they were a team, a dog that was very close to making my card. Interesting. I, you know, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna take one out of your book, Ralph. We've talked about this team before. Uh, but how about William and Mary and Dane Fisher here and the start that this team is off to, Ralph? 4-0 start for the first time since 92-93. Um, this team coming off a 78-65 victory over Hampton. They are flat out shooting lights out over here. They're averaging about eight threes a game. They're shooting about 40% from deep. And they're also 5-0 and against the number in their last five when they play a team with a winning percentage above 600. And Lon Kruger's got himself, what else is new? He's got himself a pretty good team there. They're coming off of neutral site victories over, what, Minnesota and Oregon State. Uh, they are going to uh, back home to Oklahoma here. But it's a big number, Ralph, number one. And number two, I wouldn't at all be opposed. We know OU has this habit of getting off to slow starts. We also, speaking of slow... Has that tempo with William and Mary working there, Ralph? So it's uh, it's kind of a a bit of a mismatch. While Oklahoma might eventually, of course, win the game, I'm not at all opposed to taking a shot at William and Mary, shocking the world, and uh, lighting a fire under Oklahoma in the first half. I like William and Mary in the first half. I still think it's too many points, but uh, I do like the way they're shooting the ball and the way they're playing right now. A very veteran team. You know, you're looking at multiple senior starters and no freshmen in the starting five. I don't think they have any freshmen in their seven deep. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's the kind of team you want to go on the road. And, you know, has William Mary proven they can go on the road? Well, you know, this is a team that started on the road. I mean, I don't know how many teams played their first three games on the road, yep. but you got a high point. Yeah, not a good team, but you're still away from home. You go to American, a team just about equal with you in the standings. And then you go to the aforementioned Wofford we just mm -hmm. talked about. And what happens? You you sneak out a nice one-point win, which yep. helps you. You know, going on the road and blowing out opponents is one thing. Going out on the road, I think, and being in a close game, win or lose, win especially makes you better prepared to to travel on the road the next time. Yeah, and again, I would look at the under here, guys. We know William and Mary, they do uh, they do play some deep, and they're also slower than anything, uh, and OU is going to bring some defense, but you never know. I mean, first half, they uh, OU's come out slow here a couple of times already. It's kind of what their MO is. They turn it on late. Who knows? Maybe they'll be just slow enough to be able to get us the victory there in the first half, Ralph. So we gave us that situational spot. Again, on the road, uh, um, a very um, veteran-laden team. A lot of seniors on that William & Mary stuff. But there are some marquee matchups here tonight, Ralph. Some games we haven't talked about yet that I can tell you already the ticket counts are through the roof because I know what you're going to say. So give us one of these top games here tonight. Well, Joe, I'm going to double dip here. Ooh. You know, uh, the marquee matchup is also going to be my best bet. And for those that are going to Wager Talk or Sports Memo to get your plays for $9 tonight, uh, yes, I have a college basketball 5%, college football 5% play, but don't buy my college basketball play. I have one play today, and it's on Evansville. Um, you know, this team... Uh, they're off an 11. They're off an 11 win season, and their top recruit didn't work out last last year, and he had to sit and go to prep school. And in uh, 
in Walter McCarthy's first season here. He got a couple transfers in, one from Kansas, one from Coastal Carolina that had a sit out. You know, the Ball State win was good. The Kentucky win was legitimate. They then come back home, and you don't have that letdown after Kentucky because you played Indiana Kokomo. Now you have SMU, and this is a game they are just thrilled. This is the biggest game in Walter McCarthy's tenure because you're 3-0. and You have excitement. You're off that upset against Kentucky. The team knows you can play. You're off an 11-win season last year. That was horrific. You have the number one free throw shooting team in the country. That's certainly something you want when you're playing a close game. And on the SMU side, uh, you know, what have they done? They've played three teams with an average ranking of 280. Yeah, you may be 3-0, and but all three games were at home. And you still only won by 9, 13, and 17. Now you have to travel to take on a team, Evansville, on the road that's playing good defense. Your turnovers, you've been sloppy. Your 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 number two hundred in turnovers out of the three hundred fifty four teams. Um, I I just I think I think Evansville runs them out. And again, that's our marquee matchup. And again, that is my best bet and the play I'm selling at Wager Talk. So after I just babbled for that long on why I like Evansville, Joe, yep. did you agree with me or are you going, you going to butt heads with me? Now, I'm not going to butt heads with you, Ralph, because I happen to agree with you there. I think this is going to be a, uh, a certainly a test for SMU here. I do like Evansville. I think confidence early on in the season will take them a long way. I can also tell you this, Ralph, um, the money seems to agree with you, although it's close. You got 45% of the tickets uh going to smu 56 percent of the tickets but the the money the bigger money bets obviously are going with evansville the line is uh it's been stuck there at uh, evansville laying two uh and it's only moved about a half a point as far as the total 139 and a half it's 140 pretty steady across the board here so it also happens to be the most amount of tickets as far as handle goes, Ralph, on any game here tonight. So a marquee game? Yes, I would say so. There's a lot of people looking forward to this game here tonight. Well, why don't you start us off on our next game? And, you know, the, the pickings were a little bit slim, and Irvine's down a little bit. And, you know, if people are wondering why Arizona's off to such a good start, mm-hmm. well, that Irvine team that was so good, Irvine's top player is a grad transfer who's now playing for Arizona and playing yep. very well yep. in that role. Irvine's still a good team. Colorado's a team that I really like this year, and I've used them. Mm-hmm. Uh, your thoughts, Joe, on Irvine well, at Colorado? You know what it is? The Anteaters, they, they did have – they've got a nice start, of course, to the scene. They won their uh, their first three games. But I think this is obviously a big step up in competition, Ralph. And for Colorado, they opened up the season with a 10-point win against Arizona State. They looked really good – in their last game against San Diego. I think the big difference for this team is on defense, and I do think defense is ultimately what's going to decide this game, which is what we've come to know with uh, with Cal Irvine. They're giving up 70 points a game, the Anteaters. Buffalo's only given up 62 a game thus far. I think the, the Buffalo's defense, they shut down. They shut down pretty well. I think they'll shut down late. I do think there's a possibility here that Colorado – Uh, runs away with this game strictly because they have the better defense, Ralph. Yeah, I, you know, I have Colorado real close to the top two. Mm. You know, I have Oregon and Arizona, 1A, 1B, and Colorado right there. Now, you know, Colorado has been sloppy. If you look at their stats – They've they've turned the ball over. Mm. They they have not been they have not been crisp. Now I guess you can answer it by saying this. You know, your first game against Arizona State was in China. Right. <laughs> then you come back and you don't play a game for eight days and you had to deal with that travel back from China. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that certainly to me explains why they had a bad start against San Diego and mm-hmm. struggled and, and then came away late. So I agree with you. I, Yes, they have ugly numbers in some categories, but the situation, I think, explains those. Mm -hmm. If they're ugly again the next couple games, then we'll have to take a look at what they are. But this is one that I can see turning because of that situation. Irvine's still a quality team. I think they were what? They lost two road games last year. Mm. They really had played well. Well, we saw that, you know, Back in game number two, they went to Pepperdine and they lost a game. Right. A game that, you know, was a toss-up type situation and it went down to the wire. They ended up losing by four. 
And, you know, but they did win at Boise on Friday. But, uh, you know, you want to talk about conditioning. It's November 18th. You're playing your fifth game. Mm -hmm. You just went to Boise on Friday night. Now you're playing at Colorado on Monday. Yep. You know, you have some altitude. You, you have uh, you have some situations where you're playing short back-to-backs. Yep. So, you know, again, and one of the angles we gave out, Colorado 9-1-1 one, one at home the last couple of days. Yep. I, I agree with you, and I, I agree with the Colorado spots. So, you know, that 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 is one that we're going to side up. Well, Joe, let's finish this segment off. Yes. I gave you my best bet where I double dipped on Evansville. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give our viewers a best bet to finish off this Monday, November the 18th show? Love this. All right, Ralph, call me crazy here, but I'm going to go big. I'm going to take the big points because I do believe this is a team in transition. I'm going Utah Valley. Give me the 24 points. Going Are you up. crazy? Uh, give me Utah Valley with the 24 points. Listen, the biggest upset thus far early on in the season, guys, we know uh, Tuesday night, Evansville, right? They they upend Kentucky. The world is falling. Um, the Wildcats are still going to be one of the best teams in college basketball. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it was a surprise to a lot of people. But maybe Evansville, I think, was a little bit undervalued there. They're going to be looking to rebound uh tonight uh, with utah valley however utah valley is a team they entered this game what three and one i think they've looked actually pretty good into three wins they've won all of those games by double digits hell they've even dropped a hundred points on a team it will be of course their toughest competition to date but the utah valley is exactly they shoot the ball exactly well enough in order to be able to backdoor a game like this ralph where i think kentucky yeah they might be bent and coming out for fire but they got to be careful, right? A lot of uh, a lot of new faces in Kentucky still trying to figure some things out. I think Calipari wants to win more than anything else at this point, this early in the season. I'll take the points. And l let me remind you, that was part of the TNA, Joe, was mm -hmm. that angle we used in November, play against a home team that lost as a favorite versus an opponent that won as a dog, that record 9-26, 25%. And I am very upset. Oh no! And I and I can say this: I remember the game Utah Valley won as a dog because I played UAB <laughs> against Utah Valley. And again, I'm not afraid to mention my wins, and right. we're going to mention the losses because yep. there's a lot of volume I give out. I've averaged over 320 plays each of the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. So you know, you, you a team becomes a focus of you when they beat you. And like I said, I had you all UAB at home playing seven and uh, Utah Valley just knocked them out 66, 55 and mm -hmm. UAB is no easy place to play. People may no. not know it. You go down there and mm -hmm. uh, you, you go, you go into Birmingham and, mm -hmm. and beat Rob Henson and the guys, and you've done a nice job and they just did that in their last game. Yeah. I, and Utah Valley plays some defense here. And uh, I don't think Kentucky, it's one of the biggest problems with teams like Kentucky is trying to get that defense uh, lined up. Everyone wants to be a superstar. Everyone wants to be a scorer. Well, you leave some easy, easy baskets open for Utah Valley. Next thing you know, you're only winning by 10 instead of 24. So that's the direction I'm going. And guys, of course, like Ralph had said, you guys head over to Wager Talk right now. A lot of games available on the card here tonight. Ralph, he's got his 5% play up. He's ready to go. It's across the board. All plays available right now over at wagertalk.com. And you got that college football. You ready to go here, Ralph. And In fact, you said Monday night game you got as well up there? I do. Uh, it's only my third Monday night play in in two seasons. So, you know, some guys have a lot of plays on Monday night to try to draw interest. I just don't. And my philosophy is this. You know, when I'm handicapping the Sunday card on Saturday, if that Monday game were one of my top three plays, then it's going to be a Monday night play for me. If not, I don't force it. So, And remember, guys, if you need to get caught up in college basketball, you go to my home – college football, excuse me, you go to my home page – I've got my power ratings update. I have the gridiron guide, which is a full page per college football matchup. I have the uh, wager talk college football stat compare sheet and one page schedules with the circle lines and the super book look ahead lines. 
Everything is free. Wagertalk.com. Go to the Ralph Michaels page and download away. There it is, guys. Good luck to you at Cal Sports LV. Make sure you're telling him on Twitter. I'm at Joe Ranieri. Make sure you subscribe to the channel here, guys, up in the upper right-hand corner there. Never miss an episode. We do these every day during the week, getting you caught up with everything you need to know about the tip-off in college hoops. So on behalf of Ralph Michaels, I'm Joe Ranieri, wagertalk.com. Good luck, guys. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.